Thank you very much indeed, Heidi. Now, just before I do bring God's closing message tonight, I do, as meant to say, on Christmas morning, the boys and girls would like to bring in a wee toy that they've got for Christmas. Please do so. And I, I want you all to bring them up to the front on Christmas morning because I love the toys. And please do that. Won't you, boys and girls, you bring up, a, bring in on next Christmas morning, next Lord's Day, a, a toy what you have received for Christmas. And I, you come, come and show uh, Pastor George uh, what you've got for Christmas. Let's take a wee moment and we'll bow in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we do thank and praise thee for help giving so far. We just pray, Lord, now for your message that you would bless it to our hearts for Christ's sake. Amen. And amen. Is it all about Christmas? That's the question tonight. Is it all about Christmas? Just the other day, I was in the High Street Mall in Portadown shopping with my daughter, Rebecca. And to tell you the truth, she's getting nearly worse than the mother when it comes to shopping. Because, you know, Tracy is deadly at the shopping business. Do you know one day we were in Newcastle? We were in Newcastle one day, and there's a shop in Newcastle I dread to see her going in. Do you remember the old Tom and Jerry cartoons of long ago? Do you remember them? Hands up if you remember them. You do, the Tom and Jerry's. I love Tom and Jerry. And you know the wee, the, the, the wee part where Tom gets his finger stuck on the till? And the next thing his eyes go ding a ling a ling a ling a ling and all you have is these pound signs. Well, any time Tracy sees seal signs, those lovely green eyes go ding a ling a ling a ling a ling a ling a ling a ling. And then all you see is the pound signs. Well, there was a shop. There was a shop in Newcastle which I won't name. But anyway, there was this day and I was in no mood for shopping. No mood whatsoever. And I think all the other men that was in this shop had no mood either, had no notion of shopping as well. And I sat and I happened to watch all the men, and they were all just like me, traping out after them. If they weren't going to here, they were following them here. And there we were, men, walking about like, like sheep without a shepherd. But then I noticed in this shop, boys and girls, a lovely cream leather settee. And I said to myself, now I'm going to sit down in that leather settee, and I'm going to rest these tired legs, and Tracy can run about all she wants. And so I did. But you know what happened, boys and girls? Pastor George's eyes got very heavy. <laughs> and I didn't know they were getting very heavy. Until my eyes opened again and the shop was in darkness. Lights out. And all I could hear was these three young lassies saying, Do you know him? <laughs> and I could hear the wee conversation going in the distance. I, I don't know him. Do you, do you not know him? No. no. Do you not know him? Where has he come from? And then I could hear this voice away in the distance. He's my husband. <laughs> and I woke up, and I didn't know where I was. And that's the beauty about shop. Well, the other day I was in the High Street Mall and pulled it down, and Arabaca had me going from here, going to there, and going to the other place. And I said to Arabaca, I think it's about time you got your daddy a wee cup of coffee. And so we went into the cafe, and, and I got a coffee in a caramel square. Oh, there's nothing like a coffee in a caramel square. <sighs> Very tasty. But as I was having my coffee and my caramel square, I looked out through the window and I noticed this, shit, this sign in one of the shop windows where it said, it's all about Christmas. And you know the thought struck me that day when I read that sign, it's all 
about Christmas. Well, here's the question tonight. Is it all about Christmas? As I watched the shoppers that day in the High Street Mall and in Porta Down, they were darting from one shop to the other shop and darting from here and darting from there. They were like mice. And I thought to myself, do you know, that's the way it is with so many people. It's, it's all about Christmas. Well, I want to close this carol service tonight with a wee message the Lord gave me in that cafe. Because, you see, it's not all about Christmas at all. It's all about the first six letters of that word, Christ. Because the Lord Jesus, not the Christmas tree, not even Santa Claus, the Lord Jesus, is the meaning of Christmas. And I want to bring to your attention tonight the forgotten facts of Christmas. The facts that today's society has forgot concerning the season of Christmas. Because, mind you, the Christmases of long ago are different from the Christmases of today. Because the Christmases of long ago, there was still that thought, there was still that reverence as to the real meaning of, of Christmas. But I want to steer your thoughts this, after, this evening, and I want to bring God's message just for a few moments from the words that we read in 1 John chapter 4 and verse number 9. Because in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 9, there you'll find tonight the forgotten facts of Christmas. The facts that people have forgot about. In that very verse in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 9, you have first of all the amazing fact of Christmas tonight. I want you to think of that tonight, the amazing fact of Christmas. Now, here's the amazing fact of Christmas tonight. In this was manifested the love of God toward us. Now, that's the amazing fact of Christmas tonight that so many have forgotten. God's love toward us. As we draw into this Christmas season, dear friend, I want to bring that amazing fact to your heart this evening. God's love toward us. Every one of us sitting in this tabernacle here this evening is in that very lane tonight. God's love toward us. You know, in 1 John chapter 4, verse 8, yes, and again in verse number 16, You'll read these three words tonight, God is love. I wonder, do you believe that fact tonight, that God loves us? Because this Christmas season spells out this amazing fact tonight. Because God's love tonight is the heartbeat of the Christmas season. What we read, what we read in Romans chapter 5 and verse 8 are these lovely words. God commended His love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. 
You see, that's where we began tonight in our Scripture reading. Man's greatest problem was sin when he disobeyed God in the Garden of Eden. And because of what happened in the Garden of Eden, you and I have been brought into this family known as the family of sinners. Because the Bible teaches us tonight, all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. And because of sin tonight, God won't allow us into heaven. It's our sin tonight that blocks us from getting into heaven. But in spite of sin tonight, and in spite of what happened, the Christmas season declares this amazing fact tonight, the love of God toward us. Even though tonight perhaps you've never, you never read a Bible, perhaps tonight you, 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 you never pray, Perhaps tonight you don't go to church all that often. But here's the amazing fact tonight concerning Christmas. God loves you. Tell me this tonight. Does that not touch your heart? Because this is the amazing fact of, of Christmas. That God loves you. Our friend tonight, Amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, shouldst die for me? And then secondly, I want to bring to your attention the, the awesome fact of that text tonight. Because here's the awesome fact of Christmas tonight, and it's this, that God sent His only begotten Son into the world. Do you know what's one thing telling someone that you love them, but you've got to prove that you love them? And you know the greatest gift ever given, the greatest gift ever received was the Lord Jesus Christ when He came into this world. You see, the awesome fact tonight is this, that God sent His only begotten Son into the world as the wee babe of Bethlehem for the sole purpose to go all the way to Calvary's cross. One day a farmer was nailing a, a sign up on a post where it said, Pups for sale. As he was nailing the, the notice to the post, this, felt, this farmer felt this wee hand tugging him on the leg of the trousers. He says, Mister, I want to buy one of your pups. And the farmer looked down and says, Well, now, now, son, these are praise pups. I can't sell any of them. And the wee lad was, was all sad. He says, well, please, sir, please, now, let me see the pups at least. Let me see them. And so the farmer called all the wee pups, and he just called the mummy's name, the pups, the, 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 the dog's name, and, and she come running out, and these wee, these wee balls of fluff come running out after and the wee boy was amazed at the beauty of these pups. But then there was one pup, and it stumbled out of the, out of the wee house, and it couldn't walk properly. It was limping and very sick and had very bad legs. And the wee boy looked up to the farmer and says, Oh, please, mister, please now, let, let me buy him. And the wee boy rolled up his, the legs of his trousers. You see, mister, that wee dog can't walk properly. And look at me. I can't walk properly. And that wee puppy needs someone to love it and someone to care for it who understands its, its pain. And the wee lad put his hand into his pocket and took out a few bob. And he says, Mister, that's, that's everything I have. Will you take it? And I'll take him home. And the wee lad gave all that he had into the farmer's hand and lifted the wee pup and took it under his arm and took the wee sick, broken pup home to be with him. 
You know, dear friend, tonight, God so loved us, He emptied heaven with His own Son and gave everything in Him tonight by sending His only begotten Son into the world so that He could not only love you tonight, but who could save you tonight. Because the, Lord, the lovely Lord Jesus of Christmas, that's only the beginning of the Christmas story. It all goes and is all fulfilled at a place which is called Calvary, because there where the Lord Jesus had to suffer and to bleed and to die on that old rugged cross. You see, that's the only way sin could be dealt with tonight in the person of a son. There was no other good enough to pay the price for sin. He only could unlock the gate of heaven to let us in. And that's the amazing fact of Christmas tonight. But I want to finish with the addressing fact of Christmas. And here's how it all ends, that we might live through him. Do you know, dear friend, here's the true meaning of Christmas. And this was manifested the love of God toward us, that he sent his only begotten Son into this world, that we might live through him. And tonight, there's only one person who can save your never-dying soul, and that's the Lord Jesus tonight. And on that starry night so long ago, God sent his only begotten Son into this world that we might live through him. You see, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Will you receive God's gift to you this evening? The gift of His Son, the gift of eternal life. God gives you the gift, but you must receive the gift to make it yours. Will you receive God's gift tonight by accepting His Son to be your Savior? What a holy night it was when Christ was born. What a night when Christ was born for you, born for me. Emmanuel's going to come now and lead us in our closing hymn. And that's the closing hymn tonight, O Holy Night. And I'm going to ask Emmanuel to come up and to lead us in this, the words are going to come up on the screen. And after we sing this hymn, we'll remain standing, please, for the closing prayer. And Gordon's going to just, just inform you when to come in and when not to come in. All right, Gordon. Thank you.